morning, if you can hear me, and as I want you to shout the greatest amen you've got, and you're going to do that by honking the daylights out of your horns. Honk your horns for a mighty amen. Amen. It's a lot better. Well, good morning. Happy Easter to everybody. So I expect you to worship the same. While we're playing music, instead of blowing your horns, maybe you can stick your hands out the window if you want. But the horns will kind of conflict with our music. So uh, let's worship the Lord this morning. Somebody look at somebody and say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Jesus is the 
chains I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom He faithfully
this morning. And for us to sing and to minister and to preach and to get you out of here by 11 o'clock. That's our goal. I'm mindful of the time this morning. It's 25 after 10. Can we have just maybe a few extra minutes past 11 of your time? If we can't, there you go. This is going to be fun today. This is going to be fun today. Amen. You can clap your hands in your car. You can, you can honk your horn if you want to because I'm not singing. I'm preaching. So if you want to flash your headlights, you can flash your headlights too. Although Facebook Live can't see those, but they can hear you when you honk your horn. One thing we didn't take into account today was the wind. And I'm kind of an old school preacher. I like to have my stuff in front of me on paper, not digital stuff. So I'm going to have to contend with the wind. So you just track with me this morning. But I want to bless you for being here today on this somewhat overcast yet sunny Easter Sunday morning as we glorify God together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to have a moment at the end of our service. We're going to, they're going to play some more and we're going to sing some more at the end. We may sing you out today, but that's okay. And, and so I'm just expecting a great, a great move of the Spirit in lives this morning, in my life, in your life, in the life of the church. I want to take you to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. So if you've got your Bible, you can go with me to Matthew the 28th chapter. We're going to read from verse 1 through verse number 8 this morning. And I don't have a, 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 a meme for you to look at, but I'll just tell you today that the title of this message this morning is simply the power of Easter. The power of Easter. Matthew the 28th chapter beginning at verse 1, reading all the way to verse number 8 this morning, says this, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, we realize that Sunday is the first day of the week. Amen? Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. How many of us realize that we've come today to seek Jesus who was crucified? Amen. They've come to seek Jesus who was crucified. Verse 6 says, He is not here. He is risen as He said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. You've come to seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here anymore. He's risen just like He said He was going to be. Come see the place where He lay. And go and tell the disciples quickly that He has risen from the dead. And indeed, He is going before you into Galilee. There you will see Him. Behold, I have told you. The Bible says, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. I wonder how many of us have some fear this morning. Not fear like we're scared to death, but fear like we're in awe of God. I wonder how many of us have the awe of God in our life this morning. And I wonder how many of us have great joy in our heart together today. It is a great day in the presence of the Lord to be alive. Amen. It says with fear and great joy. And they ran to bring the, the word to the disciples. I want to tell you this morning that Easter... It's more than just the pageantry. Although we like getting together in the church building and we like seeing the pageantry of Easter, we like seeing the drama of Easter, we like seeing all the lights of Easter and all the smoke and effects of Easter. Easter is more about, it's more than just the pageantry. Easter is more than just about the program. If we'd have been able to gather inside today, no doubt we'd have had a program. We'd have had some kind of a musical program, some kind of a drama, dramatic program. We'd have had some kind of program 
We'd have had programs to hand you when you came in the door this morning to the house of God. But I want to tell you that Easter is more than pageantry. And Easter is more than the program. And Easter is more than just the presentation. Amen, somebody. Come on, help me preach this morning. I mean, come on, look around you today. This is not the way we would have initially intended to present Easter. This is not our normal mode of operation to gather outside in our cars or uh, socially distance ourselves under the, under the overcast sky. We would normally not have gathered like this. This is not how we normally would have presented Easter. But I want to tell you that Easter is more than pageantry. Easter is more than a program. And Easter is more than a presentation. Easter, my friends, is about the person of Christ and the power of God. Can somebody say amen? Easter is about the person of Christ, hallelujah, and the power of God. I want to share with you this morning what the Scripture says about that. We're going to leave on a good note today. We realize that Jesus Christ went to the cross on Good Friday and He laid in the tomb on Sunday. Saturday, but when the women went to the tomb early on that first day of the week, early on that Sunday morning, there was no Jesus in the tomb, there was no body in the grave, there was only grave clothes in the grave. Jesus Christ rolled out of that tomb, Jesus Christ made himself aware, made himself available to those around him. There was no place holding that body down. Jesus is not here, he's risen, he has done exactly what he said he was going to do. Grave couldn't hold him down. The Roman government couldn't silence the gospel even his disciples were silenced and the Pharisees and the Sadducees may have been satisfied but it was a setup for you and me he set us up for Easter 2020 to be out here on the on the 581 glorifying and magnifying God together somebody shout this morning hallelujah my goodness I need a longer cord I need a cord about 500 feet long. I'm good, Joe, Brother Joe. I'm good. I'll get used to it. Uh, I'm glad to be gathered here with you this morning. It's more than just those things. It's about the person of Christ and the power of God. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about that over in the book of Philippians, the third chapter, Philippians chapter 3. The Bible says in verse 8 to verse number 10, this is Paul writing to the church of, of Philippi and it says these words he say yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things it is because of Christ we are gathered here this morning whether we are in our cars or in our buildings he said I count I count all things lost for the glory of God he said I count them as rubbish why that he may gain Christ he said I'll let everything else fall by the wayside just give me Jesus I'll let the building be closed up just give me Jesus I'll sit in my car on Easter Sunday morning just give me Jesus I'll be tethered with a corded microphone just give Give me Jesus. I can't hug my neighbor's neck and I can't shake their hand, but just give me Jesus. I can wave at somebody. I can give somebody an air high five. I can show my pearly whites and let somebody know I'm glad that I'm in the family of God and I'm glad that the family of God is gathered with me this morning. Amen, somebody. He said, I count them all lost. They're rubbish to me that I may gain Christ. He said, and be found in Him. Not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Here, listen to what he says in verse number 10. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. What Paul is telling you and I this morning is simply this, that Easter is more about those things. It's about the person of Christ and the power of God. What Paul has said, Paul said, above all things, I want to know Jesus Christ. I don't want to know about Him. I don't know things He has done. He said, I want to know Him. I want to be intimate with the One. I want to be intimate with the One that gave His life for me. I want to be intimate with the One that sacrificed Himself for me. I don't want to know about the story. I want to know the person of the story. I want to know Christ. Paul said, I want to know Jesus. I want to know Christ. 
He said, I want to be associated. I'm trying not to get too happy because this cord ain't but so long. He said, I want to be associated. I want to have fellowship with his sufferings. What Paul is saying is, I want to understand what he went through. I want to have fellowship with what he endured. I want to know that what he went through means something to my life. And I want to know that what he went through means something in somebody else's life. I want to know that if he endured that, that what he endured, I can endure what I need to endure today. He said, now listen, if Jesus Christ can be beaten, then I can endure a, a, a whipping. If Jesus Christ can be spat upon, then I can endure being stoned. If Jesus Christ can be scourged and rejected and despised, then I can endure being in the, in the shipwreck. What Paul is saying is I'm going to be associated with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you this morning that you can't live a Christian life and not identify with the sufferings of Jesus. Listen, this thing's not tiptoeing through the tulips and it's not drinking sweet tea and eating cake flavored donuts. It's about advancing the kingdom of God and the Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. I want to tell you something. There's no government that can shut down the church. There's no government that can tell us to be quiet. There's no government that can tell us that we can't gather together. We gather together. Listen, the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence. And the violent, not those that are mean with spite, but those that are violent against the darkness, the violent take it by force. Listen, we live in a dark world. You know that. I know that. But listen, we're going to fight for the glory of God. We're going to fight for the advancement of the kingdom. We're going to celebrate Easter Sunday morning 2020 for the glory of the Lord. He said, I want to know Christ. I want to be associated with His sufferings. I want to have fellowship with His sufferings. He said, but I want to know, and this is the most important thing. He said, I want to know the power of His resurrection. I want to know the power that was able to quicken that body and bring that body back to life. I want to know the power that was able to give Jesus the ability to walk on the water. I want to know the power that was able to give Jesus the ability to multiply five fishes and uh, five loaves and two fishes. I want to have the power that gives Jesus the ability to see blinded eyes open and deaf ears open and, and, and tongues loosened and crippled limbs made perfect again. I want to know the power of His resurrection resurrection, the power that was able to bring Jesus Christ to bring that body that had been sacrificed to bring that body that had been sown, to bring that body that had been laid in that borrowed tomb. He said, I want to know the power that brought that body or brings that body back to life again. Can I tell you, all that was my foundation this morning. Here comes the sermon. Are you ready for it? Somebody shout amen. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Paul tells the church in Rome, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 11. This is what it says. One little verse of scripture this morning. He says, but if the spirit of him, the spirit of God, the spirit of him, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. I want to tell you this morning ah, that the power of God that brought Christ back from the dead is the same power that can live in you and me today. It's the same power that raised Christ. It's the same power that can raise you and me. I said it. I'm going to say it again. The power of God that raised Christ up from the dead, that raised His body out of that tomb, that gave air back in His lungs again, that brought Him out of the darkness and set Him on the foundations of the earth. The same power that gave Christ life again is the same power that can raise you and I up. He, just like she, listen, the first day of the week, they went to the tomb and the angel was there and had rolled the stone away. We know that's the Easter story. We know that's what happened on that occasion. But listen, I want to tell you something. That when they got there and they got to looking in that tomb, there was no body there. Jesus' body wasn't there. There were just 
grave clothes that were laying in that tomb. And I want to tell you that the power of God, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God had moved in that tomb and had quickened that body of Jesus, had given breath back into his lungs again. And the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away not so that Jesus could walk out. The stone was rolled away so that they could look in. The stone was rolled away not to let him out of that place, but the stone was rolled away so that we could walk in and see where it was he was at, that he's not there anymore. Jesus Christ has arisen from the dead. The angel said, he's not dead. He's not here. He has risen. He told you what he was going to do. Come and see the place where he used to be. Come see the place where he laid. Listen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Here's the sermon. You ready for it? Here's the sermon right here. The same power that raised Jesus is the same power that can raise you and me. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that can raise you and me to new faith. I didn't say old faith. I said new faith. Hello, somebody. I want to tell you. Hallelujah. That we are living in a time and we are living in a day that's going to require the church and the children of God to have new faith. I want to tell you it's going to take that now kind of faith that, that Hebrews talked about now faith is. Not yesterday faith was and tomorrow faith might be, but now faith is. The Spirit of God can raise us up with some new faith, with some now faith. The kind of faith that says, I believe what the Scripture says. I believe what the Word of God says. I believe what the Spirit of God is doing. I believe in what He said about me is true. And let, let God be, be true and let every man be a liar. I believe we got to have that new kind of faith, especially where we are today. Everybody's fearful because we having to meet like this because of some microorganism that nobody really can put their eye on. I want to tell you, I got faith today. I got faith that this thing is going to come to an abrupt end. I got faith to believe that this thing is going to come to a stop. I got faith today to understand that there's going to be a time here in the near future that we're going to be able to gather in our church building again. I want to tell you, I got faith to believe that it's not going to be church as usual. It's not going to be Christendom as usual. It's not going to be like it used to be. Used to be as dead. Used to be ain't getting resurrected. But I want to tell you who God has called you and I to be. He's going to raise us up. He's going to give us new faith. New faith. I wish somebody could shout new faith with me this morning. He's going to give us new faith. Now faith is. That when you wake up in the morning, your faith is going to be re-energized and renewed. When you get ready to go to bed at night, your faith is going to be re-energized and renewed. That when you wake up and the days progress past, that every day you wake up, you're going to wake up and it's not going to be some old sluggish Christian. It's not going to be some old sluggish child of God. It's going to be somebody that puts their foot down on the floor when they get out of the, out of the bed that morning and they're going to declare this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. You're going to put your foot down on the ground and say greater is he that sent me than he that is in the world. You're going to put your foot down and say, listen, I'm going to conquer this day for the glory of God by the faith that's inside of me. I'm talking about new faith, not old faith, not expired faith, not somebody else's faith, not your mama's faith, not your daddy's faith, not your grandparents' faith. I'm talking about your faith, your faith. God's going to give you, listen, the power of God that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that can raise you up with new faith in your life. Listen, some of you need to have some new faith in your life. Listen, we got to have new faith in our life because we face things that nobody else has faith and, it, and nobody else has faced and it's going to take some new faith to conquer those things. Somebody shout amen with me. I'm talking to Pastor. I said, this is fun. This is fun. I'm having a blast this morning. He's going to quicken us and raise us up with new faith. He's going to quicken us and raise us up with new hope. I said new hope. Not old hope. Not some thing, some vain hope in the sky, but new hope. You know, that kind of hope that's built on Jesus' blood and righteousness. He said, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand all other ground is sinking sand. I'm talking about the kind of hope that stirs up something on the 
inside of you. I'm talking about the kind of hope that you get a twinkle in your eye. I'm talking about the kind of hope that brings a rush in your spirit. I'm talking about the kind of hope that will draw you into a place where you thought you would never. I'm talking about the kind of hope that you can walk down a street and you can have hope in God that this is going to be a good day and this is going to be a great day and this is going to be a great Graceway day. I'm talking about the kind of hope. I ain't wishing for it. I got hope in Jesus. I'm not going to let my hope die. He's going to resurrect me with new hope in my life. Can somebody shout amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm talking about new faith. I'm talking about new hope. Why? Because when Jesus got out of the tomb, it was a new day. It was a new day. They thought they had to deal with something when Jesus was on the earth. They had no idea what they were going to have to deal with when the church began to rise up and be who Christ gave his life for. They thought they had it rough when they had to contend with one. Now they got to contend with millions upon millions. I want to tell you the millions upon millions. Uh, now listen, I ain't talking about some WWE fans of the rock. I'm talking about the millions and the millions of the children of God, sons and daughters of Jesus Christ uh, that going to rise up with new faith and going to rise up with new hope and we're going to live our life. Here you go. Here's the last point right now. If you're tracking me, I'm looking at my watch. I know what time it is. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. Sling this jacket off and run around this parking lot what I feel like doing this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Talking about new faith. New hope. Talking about new love. New love. I'm talking about this kind of love. You ready for it? I'm talking about new love. I'm talking about the kind of love that abides on the inside, the kind of love that you can have for those around you, the kind of love that God begins to move in your heart and move upon you, that you see people and you have compassion on them. I'm talking about the kind of love that, listen, I'm talking about the kind of love that doesn't come from a good movie. I'm talking about the kind of love that doesn't come from a good book. I'm talking about the kind of love that doesn't come from a good television show. I'm talking about the kind of love that comes from a risen Savior out of a tomb in Jerusalem. I'm talking about the kind of love that comes from the resurrected Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the kind of love that is infused by power from on high. I'm talking about the kind of love that the Holy Ghost of God stirs up in the life of a son and a daughter that glorifies God everywhere that we go. I'm talking about a new kind of love. I've been married to my bride for 35 this year, 35 years, May. May the 25th, we've been married 35 years. Wow! And I want to tell you, there's times you married couples know what I'm talking about. You're in the ebb and flow of married life. You're in the ebb and flow of living with somebody. I want to tell you that in 35 years, we might have been in some ebb and flow, baby. But it's been ebb and flow that's been on the rise. Ebb and flow that's continually got higher. Ebb and flow that doesn't go down. I ain't talking about ebb and flow going. I'm talking about ebb and flow. We might have some low points we got high points. We might have some low dips but we got some high points. Listen, we ain't on a downward trajectory. We, uh, I want, you got to hear me now. We're not on a downward trajectory. We're on an upward trajectory. We might have some ebbs and flows, but we're going where Jesus is. We might have some ebbs and flows, but we're on our way to heaven. We might have some ebbs and flows, but listen, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We might have some down moments and some up moments, but honey, we are on the rise. I'm talking about this kind of love. Love. Woo! Love that suffers long. Love that is kind. Love that does not envy. Love that does not parade itself. Love that is not puffed up. Love that does not behave rudely. I'm 
talking about the love of God. I'm talking about a new love. Love that does not seek its own. Love that is not provoked. Love that thinks no evil. Love that does not rejoice in iniquity. Love that rejoices in the truth. Let me know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Love that rejoices in the truth. Love that bears all things. Love that believes all things. Love that, in, that hopes all things. Love that endures all things. Love that never fails. I'm talking about a new kind of love that never grows old. I'm talking about a new kind of love that never wears out. I'm talking about a new kind of love. A love that you don't have to, you don't have to have somebody else come and do something nice for you. I'm talking about the kind of love that comes from the innermost part of your being that comes from the power of God tell you that Easter is more than pageantry it's more than programs and it's more than presentation Easter my friends my Facebook audience Easter is about the person of Christ and the power of God Easter is about the person of Christ and the power of God Easter Easter is about Jesus being separated from death. Woo. Easter is about Jesus being separated from death. And our having the possibility by the power of God of being given eternal life. You know what the Bible says? John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Look at your neighbor through their car windows and tell them you are the world. Come on, mouth the words to them. You are the world. So God, for God so loved the world. Come on, Facebook. For God so loved the world. You need to go find you a mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He didn't. He didn't give some. He didn't give some. Some. Some weak little thing. He didn't give some scarred up little thing. He didn't give some. Some poor little thing. He didn't give some leftover little thing. He gave the best He had to give. He gave His only begotten Son. He, the Bible said, "Listen, He loved the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but." We've got that verse because Jesus Christ got up out of the tomb on Easter Sunday morning thousands of years ago. And he got up out of death so that you and I can have so you and I can have life. that you could arise he was resurrected so that you could be resurrected I want to pray for you this morning I'm going to pray a simple prayer I want you to believe along with me today this choir and music department is going to come and they're going to sing for just a moment it's about five minutes until 11 we did absolutely great this morning somebody say give God glory hallelujah where's he at where, there he is, Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff, 25 minutes. 25 minutes this morning. Don't get used to it. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to believe with me. And then whenever you get ready to leave, as this musicians and singers begin to sing, because we told you we'd have you out of here by 11. Now, whether you want to leave at 11, it's up to you. When I, I'm, I'm finished preaching, I'm going to pray and we're going to sing. You can stay and sing with us and flash your lights with us. And when you get ready to leave, just be careful you don't run over somebody. But when you do leave, I just want to re-encourage you again. Let me, let me say this. Thank you. Thank you for what you do for the kingdom of God. Thank you for being here today. Listen. Thank you for giving. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for... Thank you for giving online. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for giving online. Thank you for sending in your support.
thank you for bringing your support and dropping it off. Thank you for bringing your support today. Listen, when they sing happen, that's the first thing that our overseer told us was be prepared because this may affect you financially. I want to tell you because of your faithful giving, it's not had to, it's not had as much of an impact on us as they may have projected. God is good. Amen. But when you get ready to leave, when you get ready to leave, Brother Bill's going to be down there. I believe he's got his He's got the Rita's Ice Bucket. If you've got your offering, if you've got your tithe, if you want to sow this morning, I'm going to bless you for doing that. I'm going to thank you for doing that. It is an honor to be your pastor. It's an honor to be out here on this chilly Easter morning to be able to speak to you and to see you and to fellowship with you, although we've got to do it this way. Just to see you brightens my day. Just to see your face puts a smile on my heart. Just to see you, just to see you makes me feel good on the inside. Listen, Father, in Jesus' name, listen, Facebook friends, you're there this morning, and maybe you're watching us today, and it's Easter Sunday, and you weren't sure what you were going to hear. Can I tell you today, today, today can be the best day of your life, because today can be the day that you give yourself to Jesus. God loved the world enough to give Jesus for you, and He's asking you, He's asking you to give your life to Him today. He's asking you to invite Him into your life and give yourself over to Him today. He's asking you to submit to His authority and to, and to ask Him to come and cleanse you and forgive you and, 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 and heal you and set you free. You can be free today in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I believe what John 3.16 says. God, I prayed a prayer and you've changed my life. Master, I pray today, God, that you would change lives this morning, this morning. God, I pray today that those that are lost and those that are undone that don't know you would let the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God, tug on their hearts and that they would say, Father, I am here, Jesus. I am here. I am lost. I am unsaved. I don't know you. But today on this morning, I want to know you and I'm asking you right now to come into my heart and come into my life and forgive me and set me free. And I'll live my life for you as long as you show me how. If you pray that prayer and believe that in your heart this morning, the Bible says if you confess in your in, in, confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. Father, I bless my church family that's gathered here today. And God, I bless every one of them. Master, I thank you for their servants. Heart, I thank you, God, that they are here with us today. And Master, I bless their home. I bless their house. I bless their family. I bless their children. God, I bless those that still have a job that they're able to go to and work. God, I bless them on the job. Master, those that have not the ability to go to work, they're having to file the unemployment. God, I, I, I pray for provisions over the life and provisions in their home. God, that you would meet every need. God, your scripture says that you meet all of our need according to according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, I pray your provision over the life of your church this morning, on Easter Sunday morning. It's more than pageantry. It's more than, than programs. It's more than presentation. It is about the person of Jesus and the power of God. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Oh, I was buried beneath my shame.